Our topic for today are prepositions. Do you remember our funny little thing of how to remember what a preposition is? Where the cat or dog can go? Yes, yes, absolutely. Anywhere your cat goes, anywhere your dog goes. Oh. Right, right. Go outside, come inside, right? Sleeps on the pillow, near the cat, if you're lucky. All right, <clears throat> prepositions, as you have seen, get used with either of two cases. Which cases use prepositions? Ablative and accusative. Most prepositions, I don't have a percentage off the top of my head, but most prepositions will actually have an accusative noun following it. So most prepositions will be followed by an accusative noun. But there is a very easy way to remember all of the prepositions that are followed by by an ablative noun. And <clears throat> the hold on, a step ahead of me here. All right. So our job then is to memorize which prepositions take the ablative case. So we are going to start with a list of Latin prepositions that are used with the ablative case. And to remember these prepositions, there's a silly little mnemonic device that everyone here seems to remember somehow, somewhere. Sid space. Yeah, we'll get there. Okay, so with Sid Space, this is a series of Latin prepositions that will be followed by the ablative Sub, in, de, sine, pro, ab, or just regular a, cum, ex, or just a regular e. These words are defined as follows. What does suv mean? Good. What about in? It can also mean on. Day means down from. Let's put a comma there, down or from. Cine. Anyone hear of Cine? Without. Good. Sinister is like the devil sinister. And then the devil is the opposite of God. And then priests are God. And God are without a wife. I mean, priests are without a wife. What? Wow. I, I might have cut that just more simply to say that if sinister is like the devil, then he is like without any sort of love or, you know, without like without, without like without normal religion. stuff. <laughs> but all right. Um, pro means in front of or before. A lot of people in English tend to associate pro with like a pro and con argument. So they think that pro actually means for. But in reality, the, the original Latin is that pro is like in front of. So if you're talking about the pros of an argument, you're standing in front of it to sort of like defend it almost. Yeah. Okay. The preposition a or ab means from or by. 
the only difference between ab and a is, um, <clears throat> has to do with the noun that comes right after it. This is the same exact idea as the English a uh, or an. I would tell you that this morning I had an egg for breakfast. But if I said I had a egg, you'd be like, huh? Because you need an when the next word has a vowel. So you need ab when the next word has a vowel. You need a when the next word has a consonant. Same idea. You know, cool, right? Good. And then X and E have the same relationship as ab and a, right, in terms of which one you use. And it means, you're correct, out of. Is the E by itself, is that for the one with the consonant? Yes. Yes. Five. Yeah, yep. that makes sense. Never mind. Yeah. Generally speaking, you're probably not going to have to make that call in your life. But it's just a good habit to get into to understand why it is the way it is. And then if you forget the other word that comes after it, you know it's either starts with a continent. Right. Right. Um, just for conversation's sake, you do know other prepositions that don't fall into SID space. These other prepositions that you know are followed by the accusative case. So let's just take a moment, if you will, to list some accusative prepositions just for the sake of conversation. Peter, what's one? Odd. Good. What does it mean? Two. Good. Two. Toward. Good. What else do you know that is a preposition? Sarah and then Cooper. Okay. Good. That was yours. Bummer. What does propane mean? Cooper. Good job, Cooper. Did Mr. Carroll tell you uh, a story about propane? No, I don't know a story about propane. Yeah. You, no, it's hilarious. Okay. I, I look forward to hearing it. What else is an accusative preposition? You just looked one up. No, I didn't. No, I was pointing to Sarah. Above. Supra. Supra. Nailed that one. Thank you, Google Translate. Yeah. Um, I'm going to throw a little monkey wrench into this situation. A simia wrench. Ah, ah, I like it. Yes, Peter? Uh, per, through. Okay, we can do that first. Hold the monkey wrench thought. Mm -hmm. Why would I make that up, sir? <laughs> All right, here is your monkey wrench. Are you ready? This is also a preposition that's followed by the accusative. No. I don't like it. I know. There is only one preposition that overlaps, that takes both accusative and ablative. However, it means something different when it takes the accusative. How do you know? The word right after it either ends with accusative or ablative. This is why we memorize your noun endings. It means into. Okay, well, this will permanently just be in two. What about on two? That's not a different one. Sure, we'll do on two. I don't think the Romans ever said on two. They would either be on it. One of the other ways that you can differentiate between in and in is that all of these um, uh, definitions of the preposition, they have to do with motion, right? Right. Through, near, maybe not so much, but above, right? Like you can only get to above in one way. You have to like fly there. 
So a lot of these have to do with motion, which is different from in, which is a location. You picking up what I'm putting down? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Okay. All right. We're gonna we're gonna call off the search as soon as we list this one. But I appreciate all of your wondrous contributions. All right. Um, one other thing that I wanted to pull out of our two lists to discuss is that quite frequently students get ob and odd confused. Does that happen to you sometimes? It's okay. All right, well, in the event that you're not quite as perfect as the people uh, that it does not affect, I just wanted to draw a little demonstration for you. Now, I just want you to keep this in perspective. Magistra doesn't draw. I am ridiculously untalented with respect to artistic talent. <laughs> so this is, we're not in an art room. Okay. So, <laughs> all right, so here, <clears throat> uh, here is the city of Rome. Okay. No, what, you could write it in a second when, when the whole thing comes together. This is not really drawing, but if you have trouble making out my characters, that's why. Whoops. I need to add a macron here. All right. Here is the preposition, whoops, ob. I'm going to draw you some arrows. And then here is the preposition odd. And I'm going to draw you some arrows over here. So tell me, this person in this odd, he is going toward Rome. This guy is coming from Rome. See, he's pointing back at it. Oh, wait, so that means from? Ob means from, yeah. You can also think from of it or by. like ob, if you, get, if you don't know what to use ablative, ablative. ablative. Right, right. Yeah. Ob is ablative, as Sarah is suggesting. Yeah. Ben? Wouldn't it be better if you did the arrows on the D? Because then A wouldn't look like a C. Stop it. Yes? <laughs> no, I have a better idea. No, I'm not a better idea. It's an idea. I think that's probably how I had originally designed it, but... Ben, I believe that that's... I, I think that's how I originally um, uh, imagined it, but I just wrote it incorrectly this time. So, But no, but thank you for pointing out that significant logic gap. Yes, Peter? Why did you mess up where you put the wrong one? It was just for the purpose of demonstration. Oh. It's just so that you know that odd is going toward whatever is next, whereas mm -hmm. ob is coming from uh, something else. It always comes after the word no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, prepositions are always used before the ablative or the accusative. Okay, so I'll put Rome over here. I'm sorry. So they're coming from Rome. Okay. Okay. Still works. All right. Not crazy. All right. Uh, now, once in a blue moon, you get an ablative noun. What? Okay. Once in a while, you get an ablative noun that does not have a SID space preposition with it. And in that case, you still have to use a preposition in order to translate the ablative noun. So many years ago, I coined this 
terribly awkward yet remarkably memorable mnemonic device to remember a set of English prepositions that you can use to translate an ablative word when you don't have SID space. So this English is when you have no SID space. And the English mnemonic device, which is so awkward that you can't forget it, is IFWAB. Dear, it's English. It's neither. It's a it's a mnemonic device. If wob, it'll stick to your ear like a cotton swab. If wob If wob, if wob is a device to remember the English prepositions, in, from, with, at, or by. I did create if wob, yes. If wob. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, but it is Latin and If wob. It's Latin and English, yes. But if you don't have an in in Latin, if you don't have one of these things in Latin, then you can translate it with one of these guys. Wob if. Oh, if wob what? Yeah. Yeah, but I don't, I don't know if um, middle school teachers use ifwab, but here we are. Middle school teachers use ifwab, we just have to remember those words. Listen, okay. and I didn't know how to use them, I didn't know when to use them. Oh, Latin last year was a joyous time. Better now? Yeah. Okay. Everything's better. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, please, take, please take out your Eke textbooks.